What's up guys and welcome to FPL Today. I'm the man in the know, JNO, and welcome to my team points and performance where we go over how I did in game week two and start to think how we can set our team up for game week three in the Fantasy Premier League. But before we get into the video, a quick video from our sponsors, Fantasy Football Fix, whose data we are using to overlook the underlying stats and also to get our projected rank as the live rankings haven't been released at the time of recording this video. Use artificial intelligence and optostats to build your new squad for the new season. Analyse the highest owned players and most popular starting squad currently entered into the FPL. Upload your squad at fantasyfootballfix.com now to improve your FPL performance. Click the link below or head over to fantasyfootballfix.com to get started. Anyway, let's get on to the video and we start off of course with... Well, let's be honest, I'm not going to slowly reveal the team because there isn't that much to talk about points-wise. As you can see, overall rank currently is projected to be 2.657 million. That is probably the highest I've been ranked in a very, very long time. A disastrous start in the first two game weeks. The game week rank is potentially at 3.837 million. Again, that is a disastrous rank for me. Total points now at 109 I've got 109 points, probably even less, in the first two game weeks and had a better rank than this, which shows that some players are really performing and I just don't happen to own them. And game week points at 32 points, which is below the average. Really, really bad start to the season. As we can see, there are points pretty much nowhere. Pope got three points, did concede against Arsenal, of course. Sinchenko and Trent Alexander-Arnold on one point each. Robertson on two. Fraser and Perez, two points. Delefeu and Jota, two points. Salah only got three points, which was double to six. So the only point scorers were Sterling with six with a goal and Wilson with an assist getting five points. That is pretty much the summary of my game week two. Fantastic game week. And just to wrap it up nicely and uh, compile my misery, Lundstrom on my bench, number one sub. If any of my starting 11 hadn't have played, Lundstrom would have come in with 14 points, which probably would have saved my game week, putting me up to around 46 points, depending on who had been dropped. But what I want to do in this episode is try and look at the players and see if their underlying stats are really that bad and if I need to be transferring them out or if I'm just getting unlucky. And we start off with Andrew Robertson at 7 million. Two points as Liverpool didn't keep a clean sheet thanks to Adrian. Uh, one shot on goal, one from inside the box, one on target. One chance created, which was a chance that was on target. A lot of ones there, but potentially he could have got a return in this game. However, being honest, having watched the game live, I believe, personally, Robertson doesn't look as dangerous as Trent Alexander-Arnold does at the moment, as I'm also going to say the same about Salah not looking as dangerous as Mane as we get further on into the video. Speaking of Trent Alexander-Arnold, he only got one point thanks to a yellow card. He had no shots on goal, but he had two chances created, one of which was a chance on target, and had an expected assist of 0.3. But just overall, Trent looks more dangerous on the right than Robertson does on the left going forward. And then Zinchenko, I was hopeful for something from this game because I needed it by the time the late Saturday game kicked off. Unfortunately, another one-pointer, two shots on goal, none from inside the box, but both shots on target. One of them being a big chance as well, apparently, and one chance created, but unfortunately Zinchenko couldn't return me any points either. Recurring theme. And just to get this out of the way, because I have to cover it, if Lundstrom had played, that would have been 14 points, three of which were bonus points, one goal, two shots on goal, one from inside the box, which was on target and which was a big chance. Oh, how things could have been different. And also he had one chance created, which was a chance on target. Moving on to a bit more positivity, we'll start off with Sterling, who did get a return. But to be fair, he was very highly captained because of the issues with Salah playing in the European Super Cup. So a goal from Sterling probably wasn't best for my overall rank, as a lot of people would have doubled this. But six points from one goal, six shots on goal, six from inside the box, two on target with two big chances. Also creating two chances with one of those chances being on target. Literally, these are the best underlying stats of any of my starting 11 by far. Salah's underlying stats aren't too bad. However, it was Mane who had the limelight shined on him after a great performance against Southampton. Salah, on the other hand, three points. I did captain it to get six. Three shots on goal, two from inside the box, one on target, one big chance, and also one chance created. Those aren't awful, but I'll be honest, Mane looked a lot more dangerous in this game to me than Salah did, and I'm starting to wonder if he's worth the one million downgrade. 
And now it starts to get pitiful as we talk about Ryan Fraser, 7.4 million, two points, two shots on goal, two from inside the box, one on target, one big chance and expected goals of 0.5. Now, to be fair, Fraser didn't look awful in the few highlights I saw a match of the day. So potentially he's got a stay of execution a little bit longer because there were players that had worse underlying stats and I noticed a lot less on match of the day. Fraser also had two chances created with two of those chances being on target. But the midfielder are most likely to transfer out. Potentially Leicester had two difficult fixtures to be fair to him. So maybe he'll stay for one game. But there's so many midfielders that I am interested in. Ayosi Perez, 6.5 million, two points from two shots on goal, one from inside the box. It was on target, but no big chances and expected goals at 0.1, which is incredibly low. And to be fair, when I watched the Chelsea Leicester game, Vardy seemed more dangerous, Madison seemed more dangerous, and Tilleman seemed more dangerous. So I'm interested in those Leicester players over Iosi Perez, who potentially needs some time to gel with his new teammates. It was a punt I took. I wish there were other punts I took, like Timu Puki, but Perez is unfortunately a punt that hasn't worked out. And then let's get on to forwards, and Wilson is the star forward at the moment, managing to get another assist two games in a row. Five points, one assist, one shot on goal, which was from inside the box. Five chances created, three of which were chances on target. Now, this isn't really why I brought Wilson in. I brought Wilson in for the goals. However, King seems to be more of a goal threat now, and Wilson seems to be the one creating chances, which is the exact opposite of what happened last season, which is very, very annoying. And now it gets bad as Delefeu, 6.4 million, two points from two chances created, both of which were on target and expected assists of 0.4. No goal threat to really speak of here. And a decrease in price, meaning my team value has taken a knock. And then Diogo Jota in the Wolves Man United game, I was hopeful here and I got rewarded with one attempted assist with an expected assist of 0.1. So what positives can I take from this? To be fair, I think Ryan Fraser may get a little bit longer in the side. Other than that, Wilson probably has a little bit longer because there's more urgent transfers. But Jota and Delefeu seem to be failed experiments. Midfielders that are now forwards. Not really sure about their worth in my club anymore. Perez is also one that I'm not too sure about. I think it may have been too early to have brought him in. Defensively, I don't like the Liverpool double up. I've said it last season and I went against it. I personally don't like doubling up on defence just in case the clean sheet gets wiped out. I tried it once last season. It didn't work for me. I've tried it at the beginning of this season again it's not worked for me so that doesn't seem to be for me potentially Robertson could be downgraded to Adinye if he isn't injured or potentially the likes of Emerson at Chelsea and then also Carl Walker at Man City who seems to be in good form at the moment and I'm hoping can keep João Cancelo at bay and maybe Cancelo plays on the left Another plus for me is there's plenty of options for me to go towards. Now, a lot of them, unfortunately, have been upgraded in price because of their current form. The ones I'm really looking at right now off the top of my head without diving into the stats even more is Timu Puki, who looks incredible at the moment. Seems to be a player that has a real good eye for goal. Scored one against Liverpool, scored three against Newcastle. That's four goals in two games. Also, the underlying stats are there to suggest that while he may not score at that ratio for the rest of the season, he will still score goals. Chelsea seem to have plenty of options there. The one I'm looking at right now is Mason Mount. If he can stay in that side, he is of interest to me. Trossard also had a great debut for Brighton. Kevin De Bruyne looks on fire and in form. Maybe I need to bring him in because it looks like he could have a prolonged stay in the league this season without any injuries, hopefully. And then also Danny Sabellos from Arsenal looked incredible in the game. Bit worried that he may not always be the player that is furthest forward, but definitely at 5.5 million looks an incredible price for an Arsenal midfielder. So we're going to have to go to the drawing board and the preview video should be a bit longer as I dive further into some of these players and who I might potentially be bringing in. I have the potential to bring in three players to really change up the side. It's about bringing in the right players at the right time. And also not transferring out players that maybe are just on the cusp of a good point return. Anyway guys, thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of FPL Today. If you have enjoyed the video, if you've enjoyed my misery basically, and uh, you can probably tell I wasn't as hyped up as I am sometimes for videos like this, please hit that like button, that subscribe button, and that notification bell. And you know what? Feel free to throw the hate in the comments. I don't mind. Tell me how bad a start of the season I've had and tell me how good a start of the season you've had. I'd like to hear some positive stories to kind of put me into a better mood.
Check out all the links in the description down below, including Fantasy Football Fix and our Patreon for $1, where you can join a Discord group where we talk FPL and also get access to a monthly and season-long game in the FPL with prizes. I've been JNO, this has been FPL Today, and remember, it's all about the game.